Yo, this is DJ, the eBay Pirate. Give me some more tips and advice on how to stay alive on eBay. eBay is kind of like a pimp. See, they put you out there, you do the work, you do all the hard, dirty work, and uh, they collect all the money. And uh, every now and then, if you go out of line, eBay sees fit to just, pa bitch slap you across the face a few times. Because you stepped out of line, and it's the pimp's job to keep their employees in line. So have any of you ever been slapped by eBay for some real or alleged violation of some obscure rule? So welcome to this episode which is entitled, Have You Ever Been Bitch Slapped by eBay? I tell you it's a real pain in the ass if you spent hours, if not days, carefully setting up the cross promotions on your eBay store. Only to get that horrible automated email that tells you that you've been suspended, e.g. pimp slapped, for some alleged violation, and all of your hard work is gone straight down the toilet. Now the reason doesn't matter, it could be real or imagined, hell it could even be a competitor complaining that you stole this photo. Even if you did or didn't, it doesn't matter. They will have ended all your listings and you get a vacation for up to a month. All those bidders, with hundreds if not thousands of dollars in commitment bids, are just gone. Forever. What pisses me off the most is whether correct or incorrect, eBay makes it virtually pointless to appeal the decision. And, even if you go through all the trouble of appealing the decision, the best that you can possibly hope for is a generic email message telling you that there was some mistake made, blah blah blah. More than likely, however, you'll just be ignored. Standard eBay procedure. So what happens when you're bitch slapped by eBay? Well, all your auctions are closed. Your bidders are sent a nasty looking email telling them that you have rabies or that nasty skin eating bacteria that everybody is scared of. More likely than not, none of those people will ever bid on your items again. That's how bad eBay scares most of them. When this happened to me once, I had a small consolation prize. Several of my store items, and yes, at the time I did have an eBay store, had hundreds of items sold per listing. This was way back when, when an item store number was pretty much semi-permanent. That is, you would keep the same item number month after month. I had listings with hundreds of sold items going back well over a year. Take the 150 or so in final value fees that I was assessed per sale times the thousands of completed items and ching ching ching, you guessed it, I had thousands of dollars in credit issued to me from eBay. Now I know that many of you have spent a ton of time creating and maintaining your eBay store and I do recognize that it is possible to make money on eBay stores, I never said you couldn't, but I strongly recommend that you establish an online presence besides the eBay owned store that you have. But remember, if you're going to invest all that time and effort into that eBay store, you want to back it up regularly using the tool that eBay provides pretty much for that purpose. That tool is called TurboLister. You can find a link to it on my site or search for it on eBay. Simply import your store regularly and save that file. That way, when you get slapped by eBay, you can repopulate your store in a matter of minutes. Again, the links are on my site under the useful link section. One of my viewers wrote to me about his experience in such a situation. One of the major problems that will arise in this situation is that listings that have bids, or indeed have actual sales, will be sent the same generic email telling them that your listings have been closed and you're a leper and they should avoid you like the bubonic plague. They are not told why. Now imagine that you are a buyer and receive this email. You're going to automatically think the worst. You're going to think that the seller is a scammer and oh my god I've just lost some money. So you immediately go off and file a PayPal complaint, unwillingly making the seller's bad situation worse. This can rapidly spiral out of control for that seller because PayPal will cancel any recent withdrawals on that account if the balance goes negative. So now the seller is short some money, needs to ship a bunch of products and may not have the money required to ship them, and has some potentially upset customers who honestly are as much victims of the situation as he is. So sellers. This is what you need to do in case this situation should ever happen to you. First, you need to do damage control. You should always save your emails from eBay. And if you don't have the emails, you can always go to your PayPal account and look up the buyer's email address from the payment page. Now, if you're a good scout, and a good scout is always prepared, you will have requested contact information for any large bids. I, for example, always request contact information from any buyer who purchases something worth $100 or more from me. In fact, many times I will not ship unless I've actually made personal phone contact with that buyer. Send out an email and don't just make it a generic email and CC everybody. Send out an individual email to each buyer telling them the situation and telling them that you will be back on eBay and please not to panic. You may also want to include your phone number. Giving them your phone number is a little bit of a reassurance to them that they can actually get a hold of you and you're not just an anonymous email. One thing my viewer says he did is try to contact distrust and safety. I can't tell you how much of a waste of time that is. Do not waste your time trying to get eBay to admit, much less correct, its mistake. They won't. 
They will not email your buyers. They will not relist your items. So don't waste your time. What you want to concentrate on is damage control. Email tracking numbers to those who haven't received them. If the order is paid, ship it out as soon as possible and again, email them tracking numbers. You want to be proactive to avoid PayPal holds. PayPal holds can spell disaster and lead to a cycle of demise. The word is communication. Call and email. When and if you are allowed to resume sales, treat this as a learning experience. You, at a minimum, should have learned that it pays to have multiple unconnected eBay seller accounts. You should have learned that eBay makes rash and uninformed decisions regarding its users. And you definitely should have learned that it's pointless to seek assistance from eBay. And lastly, but most importantly, you should have learned that it's important to sell on venues other than eBay. One of my suggestions, which eBay should implement soon, is the elimination of private listings. Since bidders will no longer be able to see each other's bids or track other buyers' activity, it's rather pointless to have private listings, since, in effect, all listings will now be private. On that note, check out my Shilling 101 and Shilling 102 videos. On a semi-related note, you may want to go check your eBay preferences. I have seen a few instances where preferences have spontaneously changed from one thing to another. One of my preferences recently changed to allow non-US bidders. I don't take non-US bidders, and if you see my other videos, you'll know why. Yet for some reason, I received a non-US bid. Now how did that happen? Yet again, it's one of those weird, end of the quarter, we need to beef up our numbers bugs. Hmm, I found another one of those bugs that seems to duplicate your listings. That is, if you're looking at your listings in list view, you will, on occasion, see two copies of the same item. Now it's really interesting how these bugs always seem to show up at the end of the quarter. Hmm, pretty convenient for eBay, right? Also, if you have a Square Trade logo insertion, or really any logo insertion, you'll want to turn that service off. eBay will make your listings vanish for anywhere from 2 to 12 hours for any edits that you make to it now. You see, eBay has an unannounced campaign against revising your listing. I remember before, when you used to make a change to your listing, that it would simply be scheduled to be re-indexed. It wouldn't be pulled from the existing index like it is now. It's important to note that any edit to your listing will cause this to happen. So carefully check your listings before you post them. Now, a personal thank you goes out to Mary B. out of Las Vegas. Thanks for the movie, and the pirate appreciates it. As always, a warm thank you to all my new subscribers. I'm going to continue to tell it as I see it. Be sure to subscribe and rate. This is DJ the eBay Pirate. Peace out.